Welcome to Worth Different Woodworking. Yes, today we're bringing a new saw to market. Well, actually, it's more of a saw kit or maybe a saw part. A saw upgrade. Yeah, that's what it is. We're bringing a new saw upgrade to market. Something that you can get that's going to make your woodworking a lot more enjoyable. Plus, it'll help subsidize this channel. For those of y'all new to the channel, Worth the Effort is a woodworking channel, but we take a decidedly more educational bent to the kind of content we produce, as opposed to making projects, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, most of the channels I subscribe to are project-based things because I find it immensely entertaining. But everything we do has some kind of educational aspect to it, even the projects we build. As such, we're a lot less marketable to advertisers and sponsors and stuff. So, we're marketing to y'all. For those of y'all that have been following me, y'all know that in 2018, I'm making a concerted effort to flip my income ratios. Because before that, you know, I would spend 70, 75% of my time making content, but that only represented about 10, maybe 15% of my income. And then I would have to really boogie in that last 25% to pay rent. And I did that by mainly working art markets and a little bit of writing on the side. This year, I want to focus more on the on the content production, and that's why I've been producing a whole bunch of those woodworking tip of the day series, uh, probably averaging close to three to four a week. Though I am taking this week off, uh, I'm only making one this week uh, just because got busy on the back end. And we've been really pr pushing our swag, the t-shirts, hats, that kind of stuff on the side. I also did a kind of a trial at the end of last year on making and designing a new tool. And while the tool was immensely popular, I did outsource production and designing and all, uh, not, I did the design outsourcing production and I learned quite a bit. It didn't make any money, but we learned quite a bit. And I will be bringing back uh, the dovetail marker and I'm still working on that sharpening system. I've got to bring it in-house in order to make it profitable. But it was really popular, and I think I can do those in the upcoming future. But now I'm bringing forth a saw, a saw handle. And I'm doing it now because we just finished the third chapter in our classroom series was all about saws. And if you saw that, I'm really impressed with the designs of saws and how they function and, and all that kind of stuff. And how they can influence your ability to make good cuts and enjoy your work. And in that last section of that chapter, I went off on that. I encourage people to modify handles. I even produced a project video on how to make your own handles. But there are a lot of people out there that just don't want to do that, or they don't have the time to invest in that. Also, I do know that there are some saws out there that are wonderful, that get a very bad rap. These Stanley Sharp Tooth saws, I would say they are 80% of some of the best saws out there if you get rid of the handle because the handles suck on them. But the blades, they stay sh pretty sharp. They're about 80-85% of the sharpness of a brand new saw from a premium company and they stay that way for a good long time. So for beginning work or roughing out work, they're pretty, pretty accurate. I, most woodworkers I know have one of these stuck in their cars to break down material at the store or they bought one, they hang on to them. Uh, they just work pretty well, but just handles are horrible. Hence the product we're coming out with today. I am, I've designed a new handle that will work with these Stanley Sharp Tooth saws. And you can buy these between $20 and $25 online and just remove the saw, save the hardware, and put a decent handle on it that will improve your efficiency with it. Also, you don't really ever have to sharpen it. Not that you'll probably ever need to because they do stay sharp quite a while and most people that are buying this kind of tool don't use it every single day. But if you do, $20, replace the blade and move on. So let's look at what I've designed. What we have here is a D7 handsaw versus a panel saw. Hand saws were longer, you'd use them to break down stuff. A panel saw was a little bit shorter, something like this 20 inch saw right here. This would be considered a panel saw and most of the time it would fit in somebody's toolbox. Whereas a hand saw is generally about 26 inches. 
Now the handles that come with the sharp tooth are noticeably flawed. I mean, you see the huge opening right here because it encourages people to put all four fingers in there. That fact alone will cause you to cut, cut offline because you really do need to point your finger. But because there's such a big gap there in the way it's designed, it's not encouraged to do that. Plus the fact, if you notice the shape of the handle right here, it doesn't quite fit your grip. It's designed for somebody with a monster hand, but you know, most of us aren't like that. Now, I have a medium-sized hand, maybe a bit chubby fingers, but medium-sized hands, and the bend where your fingers are, you see how it's kind of bending way over here, right more at that knuckle versus the, that knuckle right there? Well, that, it's just no good. It doesn't work very well. So what I've done is I took the design of a D7. I made it a tad bit bigger and from this side back, that's a D7, this side forward is 100% my design. But you notice the bigger arch right here. That is so it will fit in your palm and slide in there a lot better. Also notice the bend on this finger is right about where your knuckle is, not where this knuckle is. So it's easier to hold this without squeezing. I mean, that's, the, that's one of the ways you go off is if you're just holding your saw too much. Plus the fact that the design of the horns are so that it will balance in your hand. You're not really going to do that with this bigger design. It just it doesn't work that way. So you can spend all day with this in your hand, not having to squeeze it, and yet it will stay gripped and you will stay in control. Other things is they got the little thumb hook so that you can add more power if you wanted to use a two-handed grip. Not so much with this design. Now what I have done is I made this a tad bit too big. Because if you saw in my chapter three series, the last section, I do encourage you to modify your saws and that's simply sandpaper on a piece of wood and you can do all the modifications you want shaping it to fit your hand perfectly now what I did was I left maybe an eighth of an inch too much wood right there so that you could shave it down for example on my personal hand I would probably shave a little pinky notch right there after I worked with it a while to make sure that that would work. And I probably wouldn't shave it right down the middle. I would shave it off of this corner right there. The same with my thumb. I would probably shave that right there, but not this right here, just to make it fit perfectly with my right-handed grip. Some people with smaller hands might shave off a, this whole section right there or just thin it out to make it a little bit more comfortable but this is designed to for you to be modified but in all honesty I fully expect 90% of the people are going to be just happy because it really does feel comfortable as is and they won't find any need to modify it for themselves they won't want to go that far they'll just use it the few times they do and be happy that it fits well and it enhances their control of the saw now these are a bunch of prototypes I've been making and playing around with to learn the processing and stuff like that. And I probably will in the production version, which we will be doing in about two weeks, change up this shape a little bit. Because in the final step of putting these together, I just discovered that even though these are all the same part model, the screws that they put into the blades seem to be different on every single blade. So I'm going to have to make a little bit more room to put the screws in so they bite well. But other than that, we're ready to go into production. So I'm going to be taking orders until the third week of May in 2018. And then I'm going to order all the wood. I'll order all the blades so you can buy this without the blade. I, can, I will sell just the handle. I'll talk about that in a second. And then we'll start the production run the very next week. So a lot of y'all will start getting these uh, May, March, April, May, and June. And at that time, I will try to keep this in stock uh, for the foreseeable future because this is pretty much straight wood and I can do woodworking. The aluminum and the steel and my past tools, I'm working on being able to do those here in the shop. I'm learning some new programs and I'll be acquiring some new tools in the future to allow me to do that one. And once that happens, I'll be able to keep those in stock too. So I'll be selling these in either a maple or a cherry version to start out. 
and if you want to you can order the blade either a 26 or 20 inch blade and I'm just passing that cost straight through you when you look at the options you go to Amazon you'll see that they're probably within a buck of each other uh, so whenever you order it I'll order them from Amazon and I'll load up the handle and I'll give you the old handle back so that maybe you can slide in a piece of wood and make it into a push stick or something I don't know they, they aren't good for much but if you do order just the handle I don't think I will be drilling the holes for the screws. Uh, I'm going to have to leave that up to you for the exact reason I told you earlier. It seems the holes were different for every single plate I did right here. And that's super easy. I'll give you instructions. It is literally drawing three holes. There's no countersinking, no nothing. Just drill the holes, slide the blade in and go. Now I will tell you this. I'm secretly hoping that I can hit a hundred of these saw handles uh, before we go into production because if we do I want to buy the first new tool power tool I bought in probably five years I'd like to get me a drum sander for the simple reason a it'll make this project and a lot of the future uh, tools I'm bringing to market a lot easier not that you can't do them with hand planes and disc sanders and stuff but a drum sander would be nice but if you know the kind of videos I make I basically make four types of videos I make my classroom series videos, I make my woodworking tip of the day series videos, then I do some artsy fartsy build videos, but if you notice how I film them, I really focus so that you can see my hand movements, the tool movements, the tool direction with the wood, so those are more educational than just demonstration. And then I have my, uh, what I call my art market series, where I actually take those projects I did in my artistic series and I show you how to do a small production run so that you might be able to sell them in our art market and I also give you tips on how to sell them because I know a lot of people look at this as maybe a potential side business or retirement business or maybe they just want to make gifts for their family and they got 12 family members so you want to learn the nuances of a small run production doing and that's where that kind of drum sander would really fit into some ideas I have for future videos and future projects. Especially some of my bent lamination shaker stuff and intarsia. I got some really cool ideas that it would just make the whole thing a lot better and a lot more useful for those who go out there that are actually doing this for a living. Or want to. So, visit my website, WorthEffort.com. Go to the store. You can see some of the old tools that I'm bringing back, such as the mallets, the planes, the dovetail markers. Not sure about that sharpening system yet, but I, I got my fingers crossed. And now, handsaw handles. And I really do want to thank you all for su supporting my work, because I really do enjoy educating others. And remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.